Come on, this is us. That's how it is. I have decided. We don't come here every Sunday and we decide again and again and again. We have a made up mind that everything is for God's glory and we live for Him. And in Him we live and move and have our being. And we will make our world a better place. And even if you feel tired this morning, put on the garment of praise and give God an amazing praise. Because it's all for His glory. And 2020, we are going to see on earth. We're not going to see heaven. We don't want you to go to heaven. We want you to bring heaven in a greater way to planet earth, to our nation, to London, to Europe, to Africa, that people will know Jesus Christ is the answer. Listen. Asa believe. There is only one answer. And this is not a Sunday little cliche. There is one answer. I've sat with enough people to see that people don't have the solution. There is but one. And this is not just, I'm going to say it again, a conference thing and a Sunday thing. This is the reality for South Africa and for our world. There is but one and His name is Jesus. Come on, give Him one more praise. All the churches with us today, give Him one more praise. Hallelujah. And somebody shout, Jesus is the answer. Now, I'm not going to prophesy, but I'm going to tell you that you're going to see God move in South Africa and things are going to change in South Africa. Jy weet iemand stier my boodskap nou die dag in Afrikaans, hy sê, skoenmaker, hou jou by jou skoenmaker, en wat ook al, toe doog ek, ja, jylle wil hy elke pastoor moet stil wees, en een push over wees, jammer vir jou, jammer vir jou, we will say it as it is, we are not just going to play church on a Sunday, and allow people to destroy our country, Message without power means nothing. That's what got us in the mess in the first place. Everybody sat in church in our country was divided. So praise God. Van ochend. Met blije galme. Think about it, you sang it for years. Listen, listen, you sang it for years. You sang it for years. And then you walk into a church where there actually is blije galme. Dan denk je, wat a plek is die? Think about what is blaye galma. <laughs> Sorry for all the Afrikaans, but I need to help my brothers here too this morning, some of you. Because people will get shell shocked every Sunday when they walk into our meetings and they think, this can't be right. But yeah, you sang for years. For years. Blaye galma. Galma is klank. Galma is lawaai. Is that lawaai? Weer galm. 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 It's not. Amen. Well, let's praise the Lord with a blayer Holma. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, lift your voice, somebody. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. The Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness, not with sadness. So we want to welcome all the churches with us. 48 here this morning, so let me do the proper things, so please clap here in Blumpach and Pretoria, Blumenheims by themselves, the two locations, Kroenstad, welcome, Cape Town, Stellenbosch, Battle, Mitchell's Plain, Kales River, Wooster, False Bay, come on, look happy and welcome those tens of thousands of people, Somerset, West Malmesbury, West Coast, Durban, Belito, Peter Marisburg, Wavartburg, East London, Port Elizabeth, George, Marshall Bay, Richards Bay, Nelspreet, White River, Polakwani, Rustenburg, Watch of Thruham, Clarksdorf, Lady Brand, Tabanshi, Bochabella, Bethlehem, Kwakwa, Harry Smith, Tromsburg, Ovington, Kimberley, Katua, Hanai, Maha King, Vintuk, Swakopmund, Onga Diva, Gaberone, London, Amsterdam, Poland, Edinburgh, Manchester, Dazzle, Amal, come on, give them all a big welcome. 
all the other family members. One church, many locations, and then those in correctional facilities will welcome you. Always the greatest honor to bring God's word to you right where you are. We know that God has a great future and a great tomorrow for you on the other side of the prison door. You serve God, you stand for God, and you get yourself educated while you are in prison and you watch what God is going to do for you when you get out of prison. By the way, listen, this is great. I forgot about this, but it's fantastic. One of our pastors that work for us now uh, got saved in the prison and he started watching the live stream in the prison and he came out of that and became a member and he's been raised up to be a pastor in this house. I think that's a good testimony. Hallelujah. We want to welcome Gossie Mampuru, Groot Vlei, Groenstad, Bethlehem, Oernalsrus, Pauls, Moor. George now spread Kimberley Abington, Westville, Peter Maritzburg, Mpangeni, Moody Mulle, Potts of Strum, and then also Zambia. Our live stream viewers, YouTube viewers, international viewers, Daystar, if you are still with us, God bless you. Thank you for watching this morning. Look at the person next to you and tell that person today is going to be a great day. Come on. Come on. God's got something special for you this morning, all over. Watching my live stream, yeah, this morning. God is a very personal God and God has got something very special for you. And then, then those of you that are word addicts, do we have any word? You know, people are addicted to many things, but we need to be addicted to, to also to something, which is the presence of God and the word of God. Amen. Do we have any wordaholics? Praiseaholics. Prayerholics. Some of you stand there think, hmm, hmm, I'm just an opinionated holics. Mag hier jou help, broer, want jou opinie het nog net vir jou nonsens gebring hier in jou jylle lewe. Begraaf het toch nou bykie die opinie. Draak ek deel van iets groter as jy en breek bykie, buig bykie. Word bykie minder so dat Jesus meer in jou kan word in Jesus naam. Asseblief toch. Receive with meekness. When we come into God's presence, it doesn't mean we should be stupid, but it means we should be like children. If you think I'm not analytical, I see everything. My biggest challenge is that I'm so analytical. I stand in this service, my brain goes in 50 million different directions because I observe everything. When you sing, everything is all for you, I say, amen. That's why I want a perfect camera shot. I want perfect sound. I, want, I don't want a, nothing on a carpet. I want everything to be full of energy, etc., etc. We're not just like, we don't see things. But if you come into God's presence, you become like a child. You humble yourself and you're just ready. You're ready for God to do whatever He wants to do in your life. So come on this morning. We have somebody that God is using, one of my closest friends, that literally is shaking our planet for Jesus Christ that has impacted our church in a great way to write praise and worship songs. Somebody I love, part of our family. We've adopted his wife into the lion pride. He's still a wallaby, so we are going to convert him, I believe. Amen. To also be part of our lion, lion, lion tribe, amen. Pastor Russell is a phenomenal current leader, changing the culture of church in the world. And I want to say this, I want to say this. I honor them because there's a lot of good music, but there's not a lot of good anointed music. I listen to praise and worship all the time. It's the only thing I listen to. And I, I, I listen, I, I switch, 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 switch. Because it's all nice, but you don't feel anything. You don't feel the presence of God. They have been very intentional. To, and if you listen to their music, you should listen to their music. That they write many different genres. And they write music that is relevant to the culture of the day. But everything is anointed. Because one thing they do understand, it's not just the, the beat that will change people. It is the anointing upon the music. So I want us to put our hands together here in Pretoria and across all our churches. I want you to welcome Pastor Russell Evans today to the platform. Russell!
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Turn to your neighbour and say, you look good. Turn to your other neighbour and say, you're anointed. It's such a great honour to be here. This is an amazing church and you have amazing leaders there. Some of my greatest friends, family on the planet. And uh, also I'm inspired and led and always want more when I'm around uh, Pastor Art and Naretov Boshoff and their whole family. They are just awesome, 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 awesome people. And you're blessed to have them every week. I get them every now and then, but you're blessed to have them every week. And uh, so cool. Let's turn to your neighbor and say, we're blessed. Grab your seat. Today, the Wallabies will lose to Wales. You say, how can you say that? Well, my name's Evan, so it's Welsh, so I don't lose any way. <laughs> but Jesus is Lord, doesn't matter who wins. <laughs> Today I want to speak to you real quickly on the topic, I have joy, I choose joy, and I release joy. Everyone say, I have joy. Say, I choose joy, and I release joy. In, in John chapter 15, anyone excited about the Bible? It says, I am the vine. Jesus is talking. He says, you are the branches. If you remain in me... And I in you, you will bear much fruit. Everyone say, much fruit. You know, God doesn't want you to bear just a little fruit. Because God isn't small. God is big. There's no limit in God. And God said, I created you to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue and have dominion. So God wants to create great fruit fruit through your life. This church has great fruit. But in the years to come, you will look at what has happened now and you'll go, that seems so small to the millions and the tens of millions and the hundreds of millions we are as a church. Much fruit. And the Bible says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So he's saying the key to much fruit is to be connected to him. It says, if you don't remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and with this, such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you. That's a pretty cool statement. Watch this. Ask whatever. And it's not the type of whatever that a young person gets with an attitude. Whatever. Not that. It's ask whatever. So South Africa to be saved. Ask whatever. My family to be saved. Ask whatever. I, I need a job. Ask whatever. Your key to you being blessed is remaining in Jesus. And it says, ask whatever you wish and it will. Not it may. Not it can. But it will. It will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory. That you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So how we show where our discipleship of Jesus is we are fruit creators. We're bearing fruit. Healing the sick, raising the dead, looking after the poor, seeing every part of society influenced with much fruit. The devil doesn't mind small, boring churches. But he hates it when a church starts bearing much fruit. He hates it when a life is bearing much fruit. Why? Because we're taking territory. When I get up in the morning, I say, God, every step I take, that is I'm taking as an inheritance. You know, I go to sporting events and I go into those stadiums and I go, that's a pretty cool. I like sport, but I'm really there to walk around and say, hey, this stadium will be filled with people worshipping Jesus. Much fruit. The Bible says, as the Father has loved me, so I've loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you remain in my love just as I've kept my Father's commandments and re remain in His love. And people think that's the Ten Commandments. And it's, and it's not really talking about the Ten Commandments because He shows us straight after what His commands are. This is what He says. He says, I have told you this so that my joy, everyone say joy, may be in you. And your joy, 
may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no other than this to lay one's life for one's friend. So he's saying the command is love God and love people. That's which releases joy. You know, you're made up of three parts. Body, it's what we work on. Soul, which is our mind, our thoughts, our emotions, and our will. So we have our, our body and our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we have our spirit. So we're three components. The problem is we feed our soul with the things that don't cause us to dominate. We feed it problems. We feed it pain. We feed our thoughts in the ways of it can't be done. But if you get your spirit to feed your soul, anything is, is possible. So your spirit, this spirit you have, God's spirit, guess what it has? It, do, it doesn't, it has joy. So that means you have joy. Doesn't mean you get joy, you've got joy. You've got joy, unspeakable and full of glory. You have joy. God wants to release joy through you. See, Galatians 5, and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against, against such there is no law. So your spirit contains peace. Your spirit contains love. Your spirit contains self-control. Your spirit contains joy. So your life is there to produce fruits. And one of the fruits is joy. Hmm. I, I, I hate boring churches. Not that I hate the people. I just hate the institution of boredom. I think church, I love this church, I love my church. Why? Because there's joy, it's fun, it's like, yeah. we're serious about the cause, but we're going to enjoy the journey. You know, God wants His house to be a house of parties. Because there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. You see, a Holy Ghost party releases something of the kingdom on earth. God wants His church to be a party. Well, I'm excited about Jesus. He will change your life. And we go to the rugby and people go, ah, drink, yeah. Shout, oh, they score, ah, we've already won. We've already won. Jesus has won. So we, we win all the time. That's why you can come here this morning and say, I don't care what I'm going through, I've got joy because my spirit has joy. It's a fruit. The Bible says in Romans chapter 14, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, even though I like eating, but righteousness and peace and joy. In the Holy Spirit. So this kingdom that we serve, when we pray, let your kingdom come to earth as it is in heaven. This kingdom is a kingdom of joy. He gives us the garment of praise instead of heaviness. Gives us oil. You see, God's kingdom is a kingdom of joy. You know what the devil tries to steal? Is our joy. Because the Bible says in Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord, doesn't say the joy of my job, doesn't say the joy of my family, doesn't say the joy of my income, doesn't say the joy of my position, doesn't say the joy of my degree, it doesn't say the joy of my sporting abilities, that doesn't say the joy of, my, of how I look, it says the joy of the Lord is my strength. So to be strong, I've got to have joy. So how does the devil make us weak or try to weaken us? He steals our joy. But you know he can only steal what you allow him to steal. Hmm. You know what? God understands joy because he created you for joy. 
He created you to celebrate. He created you to experience supernatural joy. See, the Bible says, not only is the joy of the Lord my strength, but in Proverbs 17, 22, it says, a merry heart, a joyful heart, does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Proverbs 17, 22, in the New Living Translation says it this way, a cheerful heart is good mes- medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. In the Message Bible, it says a cheerful disposition is good for your health. Gloom and doom will leave you bone tired. So my health is attached to my joy. So my spirit that has joy needs to come and dominate my soul that tries to steal my joy. See, a lack of joy on the other side, a broken soul or a broken heart, a broken mind, a broken emotions, a broken broken will is bad for your health. It wears you out. That's why the Bible doesn't say, it's not the Lord's Prayer, our problem here on earth. It doesn't say, oh, magnify your lack. It doesn't say, oh, magnify your sickness. <laughs> I meet people sometimes, hey, you know, oh, I'm so bad. I'm like, that's okay. You're bad, but you're good. <laughs> See, you either live by truth or fact. Facts. I might be sick. Truth. By his stripes, I'm healed. So what am I going to magnify? The fact or the truth? I don't ignore the fact, but I apply the truth. Fact. I might be struggling financially. Truth. If I sow in tithes and offerings, he rebukes the devourer and opens the windows of heaven. Fact and truth. Fact. My family may be away from God. Truth. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Fact. There might be problems in our society. Truth. He gives us, He supplies all our needs according to His riches and glory. You have a choice to live by truth or fact. And the problem is, if you just live by fact, it can break your soul. And then it's bad for your health. My, my wife, who you saw preach, she, her mother, um, you know, the, her father ran off when she was 16 and her mother just w- went in this terrible place. She, she was very religious. She would go to, to um, church every day. She would kneel, sit and stand and she'd do church things every day, every day, every day. But nothing changed. Why? Because she, she was trying to discover a God who was religious instead of real. And then Sam's auntie got saved. And then one day, Sam's mum, who was Tim Hall's wife, by the way, part of evangelist Tim Hall, is, is there. And she's depressed, but she's calling out to God, doesn't know God. And one day, she's closing the doors to the room and a wind blows into the room. Wind blows. She goes, that's weird, I closed the doors. And then the wind blows again and she all of a sudden doesn't realize, but she falls on her face and and she says she's there and she can feel this presence and she knew it was the presence of God. And she felt like a robe was coming from her down from her feet across her body, up through her body, up, 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 up. And it came over her head and and she looked up and she saw the back of who she describes as Jesus. And she starts saying the Lord, the sinner's prayer, even though she's never say it, said it before. Come into my life, forgive me of my sin. And that moment she changes from fact Christian religion to truth Christian experience, the truth of Jesus. And from that moment, everything changed in that household. Part of the reason why, why, my, why my wife, my, my wife, why my wife, became a Christian is she saw the change in her mother overnight. But the truth was, the father ran off with everything and they became bankrupt. Fact. But the truth is, she would get what she had and she would give to the Lord and she would invite people over for dinner 
Even though she had little, she'd invite them over for dinner and she'd say, God, you're going to multiply this. Fat, I don't have much, but the truth is you're a multiplier. And she would feed multitudes with a little because she lived by truth, not fat. They'll be there and they'd sit at the table and say grace and they wouldn't have anything. Anything. And there'd be a knock at the door. And they'd go out there and there'd be all this food laid out. Why? Because they decide to live by truth and not by facts. The truth is God supplies all my needs according to His riches and glory. Now, My mother-in-law is one of the greatest givers I know. But she didn't start it when she had a lot. She started it when she had a little. Mm. A lack of joy is bad for your health. But the good news, Matthew 14, Luke 14, sorry. It says, Jesus announces himself. Think about this. Jesus, you think about Jesus when he was a... You know, growing up, he was normal. You say, how do you know he's normal? He, for one time, when he was 12, something stood out. But nothing else stood out because when he went to his hometown, when God started using him, they didn't ex- receive him. Why? Because they only knew Jesus as normal Jesus. Carpenter. So Jesus, then, he's walking and he sees cousin, John. And John goes... John probably before this, hey, Jesus, how it's, how's it going? Yo, bro, how are you? And then all of a sudden, John has a revelation. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus says, I want to get baptized. And, and John says, no, I'm not even worthy to tie your shoelaces. And the Bible says that Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then Jesus was led to the wilderness. You would think he'd be led to the palace after baptism. (laughs) See, we think favour should be born in a palace, but favour was born in a manger. Some of the mangers we're going through, we think, oh, if only I had the palace. And God says, well, maybe in the manger, I'm doing stuff in you to show you off to the world so I can release a favor in the manger. We'll eventually take you to a higher place, but it may start in a manger. And if you live by fact, you'll let the manger get in you. If you live by truth, you'll live in the palace. And then Jesus is led to the wilderness and he's tempted. So you see, we think, sometimes we go through resistance. And we think that sometimes, you know, back in the day they had this thing, that man-made name, it's called the sound barrier. And the sound barrier would be there and there'd be resistance as you'd get to a certain speed. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to resist your momentum. So what do you do when you do that? You don't live by fact, you live by truth. So you put the accelerator down. You don't back off the accelerator. You put the accelerator down. When, when the enemy comes against me, God raises up a standard. So I live by truth, not fact. Fact. Children, the disciples had been fishing all night. Fact. They'd caught no fish. Fact. Jesus said, put the net on the other side. You think about that. (laughs) Jesus, all night we've been fishing. You're a carpenter. We're fishermen. We know the stuff. You keep to the miracle stuff. We'll keep to the fishing. He says, put the net on the other side. So they put the net on the other side and they caught so much fish. Fact, they had caught no fish. Truth, the ocean was filled with fish. So you live by fact or truth. Because those who live by truth so I've got joy. I've got to hurry, I've got to hurry. Whoa, I've got to hurry. You're so nice. So Jesus has resistance, tempted. What does he say? It is written. In other words, no word, no offensive weapon. The sword of the Spirit, which is the 
Word of God. If you don't know the Bible, how are you going to defeat the enemy when he comes to attack you? All you are is in defense. You need the Word because the Word is something. You say, devil, you said that about my family, but this is what the Word says. You said that about my finance, but this is what the Word says. You said that about my city, but this is what the Word says. You said that about this situation, but this is what the Word says. It is written. Fact, Jesus was hungry. Truth, he was going to become the bread of life. And then Jesus comes down from the mountain and he announces himself in Luke 14. Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon CRC. Because he has anointed CRC. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, CRC, to heal the what? The broken hearted. The ones whose soul is broken. Their thoughts, their emotions, because of life. But he sent you to heal. Hmm. Because joy is not situational. It's like I got a job, I got joy. Woo-hoo! No, no, you just got a job. Oh, I got a girlfriend. Oh, I'm happy. No, you just got a girlfriend. But you don't have joy. You, by get, getting stuff, stuff doesn't give you joy. Getting a car doesn't give you joy. It might give you happiness for a moment, but what gives you joy is the Spirit of God. You have joy. It's not situational. Well, I'd have that now. I don't have joy. No, you have joy. Man, I gotta hurry, hurry, hurry. See, joy, watch this, is released in unity. Philippians 2, 2 says, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Acts chapter 2. And they were of one accord, one mind. So when we're in unity, there's great joy. A house that has no unity has no joy. So when I'm in unity with the cause of God, with my brothers and sisters, you see, remember, bear much fruit. Love God, love your neighbour as yourself. I'm in unity. I come together for a purpose and a cause to win the loss at any cost. I come together with a cause to bring that kingdom of heaven to the kingdom of earth. All of a sudden, I put down my agenda and I say, what can we do to change the world? And there's joy with winning. And only winning comes with unity. Any sports team that's disunified will never win. Well, watch this, watch this, watch this. Joy is sustained through having a vision of Christ. <laughs> Hebrews 2, 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, for who the joy was set before him endured. What does that mean? You see, you'll go through life and sometimes life is not fair. <laughs> and you go through stuff and you go, why am I going through this stuff? But if you have If you have a vision of Jesus, you say, this stuff is nothing to what I have got a purpose for, what I've got a vision for. I'll endure the workout to be a good rugby player. I'll endure the running to be a good marathon runner. I'll endure because I have a vision and my vision is joy of completing what I have. You see, when Jesus is your focus, He is the reason. You say, I'm going through some stuff, but this is awesome because I'm seeing His purpose. Purpose. Yeah. Oh, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. You see, James 1 says, My brethren, count all joy when you fall into trials. I hate this scripture. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, let that patience have its perfect work, that you may be made perfect and complete, lacking 
nothing. So here I go through some trials and temptations and I can view them as trials and temptations or I can view them as completing a work in me. And so I have joy and I look at the situation and I bring it on, baby, because this is making me better. This is making me stronger. So you have a choice to get bitter or better. I'm going to hurry. 2 Corinthians 9. We know so well. It says, So let everyone give as he purposes in his heart, not out of grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful, joyful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things and have abundance for every good work as is written. He dispersed abroad and he is given to the poor. So, giving empowers my joy. So if you look at Jesus and God, you look at God. What is God? He is a lover and He shows it through His giving. So you want to be more like Jesus? Be a lover and a giver. (laughs) Don't be a giver. That manipulates. That's not loving. That's not giving. That's manipulating. (laughs) So, how I feed my joy is I feed the God-likeness in my spirit, and that is giving. And so I'm going to be a giver in my word. I'm going to be a giver in my time. I'm going to be a giver in my gifts. I'm going to be a giver in my money. I'm going to be a giver in my praise. I'm going to be a giver in my unity. I'm going to be a giver because giving empowers joy. I've never met a happy sting. I've never met a joyful tightwad. That's mine. I'm going to take it to my grave. Well, good on you. <laughs> but lastly, I got there. Joy is something we do repetitively. We activate our spirit to produce the fruit of the spirit by joy. You say, what do you mean? Philippians 4.4 says, rejoice. Re means to do it again. Rejoice, 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 rejoy, 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 rejoice, rejoice. Oh, but my situations don't say that. But I say to my situations, rejoice. Oh, but my, my, my marriage is in a problem. Oh, I say to my marriage, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And you would think that the writer is said is what he has to say. He's saying, in other words, repeatedly have joy. And he says, just to re-emphasize it, and again. See, when Pastor Art talks about the vision for this church, and you say, Pastor, we've heard that. What he's doing is he's rejoying. He's saying, again, I say. Again, I say, South Africa will be saved. Again, I say, we're going to look after the poor. Again, I say, be generous. Again, I say, win the loss at any cost. Again, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. So for next two minutes, come on, let's take a, make an opportunity to rejoice again. You say, we've just had dream week. We're we're joyful. We'll rejoice again today. Rejoice again on Monday. Rejoice again on Tuesday. Come on, for the next 90 seconds, would you give God a shout of praise and thank you for all that He's done. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We rejoice in you. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Yeah! Yeah! Rejoice. So everyone lift your hands and say this. I have joy. I choose joy. And grab the hand of your neighbour and say, and I release joy. 
Lift your hands up again and say, I have joy. I choose joy. And grab your hand on your neighbor and say, I release joy. That's what we've got. We've got joy to release into South Africa. The Bible says God sings over you. So if God sings over you, what's he singing? He's singing, you're awesome. I've created you for greatness. I've created you to change the world. I, I think you're amazing. I think you, I, I, I'm singing songs over you, songs of deliverance. I'm singing over you. And God is, if God's singing over us, dude, that's better than Nicki Minaj. That's better than Justin Bieber. This is the God of the universe who's singing over us. I gotta hurry. So, if you're saved, if Jesus comes and lives in you, you have joy. But if he doesn't live in you, you're trying to find joy. The Bible says why Jesus went to the cross, he said, Oh, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Who's the joy? You. He came to give you life, John 10, 10, and life more abundantly. So if you're in this room right now and you don't know this God of joy, you might have been raised to know him, but you don't know him. You're away from God. You don't know what it's like to have peace with God and joy with God when you put your head on your pillow at night. You don't know what it's like to have your sin forgiven or you once did and you've turned. Today, we're here to release joy to you by His Spirit. You say, I want to receive this Jesus that gives you joy. If that's you, as we sing this song, I want you, I want to do the honor, I want to have the honor of leading you to to Jesus in a prayer. So I need you to get out of your seat and come and stand with me. And we're going to pray for you to say yes to Jesus. You say, I need to know this God of joy. I don't know Him. You're in the balcony. You're on the floor. You say, I don't know this Jesus you're talking about. I don't know what it's like to have peace with God. I don't know what it's like to have God's love in my life. Would you get out of your seat and come and stand with me? You say, I need Jesus. I don't know Jesus, but I want to know Him today. I need Him to come in my life. I need Him to change my life. I don't know Him. I once did, I would never have, but I need to know Him today. If that's you, if you're a Christian, why don't you release some joy? If you know someone around you doesn't know Jesus, say, hey, I'll bring you to Jesus. He wants to change you forever. Come on, come to Jesus. Get out of your seat and come. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, come to Jesus today. Let Him change you forever. As we sit. Would you come? Come to Jesus. I need to get right with Jesus. I'm away from Him. That's it. You're on the balcony. You're on the floor. Come to Jesus. Come on. Come. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come to Jesus today. Come. Come to Jesus. Yeah. Wherever you are, watching online, in any campus, come to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on, Poland. Come on, London. Come on, Manchester. Come on, George. Come to Jesus. Come on, Kimberly. Come on, Pretoria. Come to Jesus. That's it. People are coming today. He wants to change you forever. Come on, come to Jesus today. Come, come. 
people are still coming, but if you need to come, you don't know Jesus. You're not right with Jesus. He can change you today. You know why we're strong about this? Because we know the joy you're going to experience. If I had, if I gave you the cure for every disease, I would give it to you with joy. Jesus is the cure for every disease. He's the cure for sin. He's the cure for depression. He's the cure. If you need Jesus, you don't know Him. You're away from Him. But get out of your seat and come as we sing just a few more times. Come to Jesus. He's waiting for your Jesus, that's it, friend. Come on. To Jesus, that's so good. Into his so good. We're so happy. Because you're about to experience this joy that God gives. Come to Jesus as you are. Come on. He's waiting for your watch this you know how happy these people are they're not just happy they're joyful because they know where you're at but the Bible says all the heaven rejoices rejoices rejoice so I'm gonna lead you in a prayer to say yes to Jesus and everyone's gonna help you pray this prayer would you pray after me dear Jesus I believe you died for my sin so I ask you to forgive me I receive your forgiveness. I believe, Jesus, you rose again and you're alive. So come into my life as my Lord and Savior, my King, my friend. I receive you. So I receive joy in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Listen. God loves you, he 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 loves you. We love you, but God loves you even more. And we want to just spend a few moments with you. You are the VIPs of this meeting. This is the whole reason we exist. And we want to pray with you, we want to give you something. Are we going with you? Okay, if you could all turn to your left. And if you could follow Pastor here, and we'll be back in just a moment. Pastor Art's going to come on. Come on, let's give him a big hand. Let's thank God for what, what he's doing. Come on. Jesus, Jesus.